Good, good morning. Welcome to Matt and Air on Air. My name is Greg Bach, and I am your host today, sitting in for Jane Matt and Air, who is currently on vacation, and will be returning on to on Monday. On Monday, she will be back on Monday. We are joined today, of course, by Calvin, the board lord, aka what was what's the other one? Doctor Slide. Doctor Slide. That's right. Calvin, how you doing today? You know, another day in paradise. <laughs> it's always so convincing when you give us what seems like a, you know, excited update on what's going on. I mean, I'm always doing good. I just don't le- lead that exciting of life, which I, I'm fine with. That's I, what I like. So we have Amy Westruff here today good as morning. our as our guest co-host for the morning. How That's are you today, Amy? I'm great. I'm great. Happy Can you to hear be yourself? Here. I can hear myself. Good. All right, good. Yeah. Uh, we're happy to have you here again. Yeah. Amy is a, I say comedian, performer, and friend, but you do everything else, too. You do all the Just things. You're a renaissance woman, Greg. You are a renaissance <laughs> woman living in a... Because I was born in the renaissance. Actually, <laughs> that's the only reason. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a woman about town. You are. All the towns, though. All the towns. You just got back from Canada. We'll talk more about yeah. that in a little bit. But yeah. I wanted to say, Amy and I are of a certain age where <laughs> I think... What Calvin's life is, you say you don't live a very exciting life. I, While some might agree with that, when we ask you what you do for the weekend, you're generally saying hanging out, playing with your dogs, reading, and that's and playing video games, right? Yeah, I've been in a deep video game all the past couple of weeks. What game are you playing? Um, It's called Stardew Valley. Okay. It's like you, ru- you run a farm. Oh, boy. <laughs> You want because there's no farmland in Wisconsin you could go volunteer <laughs> at or anything, and no, you know, fruit stands you could go. And I just think visit. that that's an amazing life, though. Like, I do all but the video game. I was gonna say I, I played with my dog. I read. Oh, see, I just I, every Show. time someone asks me what I do at the weekend, it's always so busy and stuff going on that I'm like, yeah, I'm so jealous. Like, what did you do this weekend? Oh, we just hung out, went to go see a movie, then went home and did nothing. Oh yeah, for that comedians, sounds amazing. it's like well, I had five shows. Yeah. And then I did a remote. Then I taught a workshop. And then I did laundry. And then, I, you know, yeah, then, the nights from, from about five o'clock on on the weekends is nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, you, you're you looking at the you're looking at the clock and it's four o'clock on Sunday night. And you're like, what? what Sunday night. Four o'clock is Sunday night for yeah, you. That, I, that I, pretty much says it all. Yeah. Right there. I go. I'm, a, I'm an early birder to bed. I got to get up at the early. I have an egg salad sandwich and I go to bed. <laughs> I bought it. I bought, it was a. It was a. It was a scoop of tuna salad. It was great and some no ambrosia. Onions. I had no some onions. ambrosia and I went to bed. No onions. It does a number on me when I sleep. I wake up with a heartburn. Calvin's like, what the heck is ambrosia? Oh, don't worry, Calvin. All this will happen to you when you get older. You'll wake up one day and your knees will just pop for no reason. It'll yeah, you'll be- sound like a xylophone when you walk down the stairs. That's me. Yep. Oh. Take your teeth out, soak them. That's Greg. I I have all my teeth. But. I have all of other people's teeth. That's oh, how I, perfect. I know. But we are here having a good time today. Welcome to the show. We are happy to have you. If you want to get in touch with us, you can do that by calling 855-752-4842. That's 855-75-CIVIC. You can leave a comment on the live stream, which we are live right now on Facebook, YouTube, and the site that we still call Twitter because, one, it's always going to be Twitter, and two, who doesn't like making Elon Musk upset? Oh, I live for it. It's just wonderful to do. He Knowing pays no attention to me, but I live for it anyway. He put out a tweet weeks ago that says, seriously, though, how many of you actually still call it Twitter? And just the responses were amazing. Cause, Everyone. Yeah, I just want him to know that $44 billion straight down the toilet. So, But yeah, you can join us. You can And you can always um, get in touch with us by emailing us, which is Jane says at civicmedia.us. And there's all different ways to get in touch with us as well. You can email us, you can comment live, you can text, you can call. It's great to hear from you. And and finally, also get that Civic Media app. That Civic Media app is available in your favorite app store of choice. It's free. You download it oh. and you're going to text or call through it. And, you know, just going to get to know you. It's good to know you. So yeah. we're happy to have you here today. And we're going to start off with... Um, we were talking about fun stuff before, and I'm going to just make things really not fun. Now we're going to ruin it? Yeah, okay. I'm just going to ruin your Wednesday, ruin okay. your hump day, and talk about um, sure. former President Donald Trump, hmm. who con- 
Consequently, I don't like talking about that much. But when he's in the news, I feel like it's important to discuss <clears throat> yeah. the entity that is Donald Donald Trump. He who should not be named. Eh, okay. Let's name we him. We gotta name him. We gotta I guess. Be. I guess. I didn't know this. I saw this over the I saw this over the weekend. He did an interview on Life, Liberty, and Levin, which is a Fox News show, a wonderfully titled show on Fox. Not Coast. unleaven like the bread. Leaven. Okay. <laughs> no, got no, it. No, he loves his bread so leavened. Oh man. And That's I don't know. Missed if you, opportunity. He made a very, very interesting uh, announcement or, or a, a declaration, if you will, about his powers. Confession. As, well, yeah. I mean, well, no. He. It's not so much a confession as it is him once again. What he thinks he was able to do as president. We mm-hmm. have it in a clip. Uh, okay. Calvin, can you play that first clip? It's so crazy that my poll numbers go up. Whoever heard you get indicted? for interfering with a presidential election where you have every right to do it, you get indicted and your poll numbers go up. I mean, that's, first of all, maybe not, maybe a while ago that was the case as poll numbers were going up. Not so much right now, if you ask me. But he actually went on the news and said, I have every right to interfere with the election. Yeah, I'm completely above the law. Yeah. I mean, the the Supreme Court, hasn't contradicted that really no they've said they've said you know what that sounds like a good idea they've said him as a uh, elected official as president is immune from certain things uh as as official acts so i will say he said crazy i underlined it 14 times because (laughs) i think that he is uh but he said uh you have every right to do it and so i wonder his his Fallback is going to be like, no, no, I didn't say I had every right to do it. I said you have every right to do it. You, as the listener, you as the mm-hmm. voter, have, have every right to go, th- which, yeah, whatever. It, but that's what that's what he's going to do. He's going to backpedal. They're going to play it back, and he'll be like, no, I said you, not me. Well, I mean, he he thinks that's the case, and, and I saw someone break it down very quickly as almost to say, yeah. no, this is not even a case. The 12th Amendment does not say he has the right to. It, 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 it lays out the election process. Mm-hmm. But it does not say that the president, a sitting president, has the right to interfere with an election. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but he doesn't even, he doesn't have a grasp of basic terminology. He has no understanding of the Constitution. He thinks that asylum seekers are people that were let out of asylum. <laughs> That's legitimately yeah. the case. So it's like he has no comprehension of of words and terms that are, are used on a daily basis in the in the area of government and governing which brings me back to a conversation we've been having on this show for a while now, which is, was the press right to bring up questions regarding Joe Biden's age? I think so. He's been yeah. the oldest president. He's moving slower because of an affliction. He he walks slower. Mm-hmm. He stutters. All these things bring into light the question of, is he too old to be president? Does he need to step down? And And, and, and I understand that. But it's the fact that, when the pres the former president of the United States on cable news says, "I have every right to interfere in the election," how come that is there isn't another story being written saying, "Is this guy in his right mind?" Well, n- his supporters don't care at all. Mm-hmm. No, of course they, don't. No. they they may or may not be within their 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 own mind and right mind, but they don't care. Yeah, because to them, this just like it. It's technicalities. We, we don't care what happened. We don't care mm-hmm. if you see any interviews with people at, at his rallies. It's just like, okay, well, what's the number one thing the Democrats are doing that you're against? Like, give us some points of, like, why they're, they're turning the country into socialist country. They have no response. Mm-hmm. It's just like, I, I don't know what to say. I'm, they just parrot everything yeah. that he says. And so they don't get it either. But I'm not talking about... I'm I'm really not talking about the supporters. I I don't I don't disagree with yeah. you. I think the supporters, you could say to them, "Do you think Joe Biden's too old to be president?" Absolutely. Tell me why. Because he does X, Y, and Z. Do you think Donald Trump is too old to be president? Of course not. But he does A, B, and C as well. Oh, so you're wondering so, why the press isn't l- lurching onto this story and like shouting it from the rooftops? Right. I I don't know. Why haven't the press been lurching out of a lot of stories? I I think they probably just do the ROI. Yeah. Right. Like, what's the return on this investment? Like, it, it will it's hitting deaf ears. Nobody cares. He said every time he opens his mouth, something 
Bazaar comes out. So Calvin, <clears throat> yeah, I now I'm forgetting what network it was on, but I saw one talk show where the host raised that question. He played this clip where Trump went from inflation, nobody buys bacon anymore, <laughs> to wind energy is bad because sometimes the wind doesn't blow all right. in one question. And the host of the show asked the question, are standards just lower for him? If Kamala Harris answered questions like that, it would be a storm. Yeah. And yeah. this is just expected and no one cares for Donald Trump. Why is that acceptable? Yeah. And, and no one's been able to properly, properly answer it. And I think in my opinion, and I'm not a professional journalist and I don't work for a major news network, but I think that when it comes down to it, he is ratings covering him yeah. brings people to this, their TV sets or to their, ratings and their sound devices, bites. but That's also the world he lives in. But also those companies, the CNNs, that they're not owned by liberals. They're owned by conservatives or companies that don't care so much about the politics. They just care about the money, and they're yeah. responsible to they're responsible to um, shareholders. And the the most over the board notion I have that almost you know can knock on the doors of conspiracy theories is if Trump gets into office. And he and Project Twenty Twenty Five becomes a thing. <clears throat> he will be in charge of the FCC, and that hands out licenses. And people who do not adhere to dear leader's message can have them pulled, if not worse. Yeah. And that's what I, I don't like going too deep into that one because I work for a media company and I don't want to be thought of as the enemy. But these questions have just it, it's it's a double standard that has completely befuddled well, me since he, he's a walking double standard. And I mean it. Just every single uh, campaign event yeah. that's held at Mar-a-Lago or any of his properties, he's like triple dipping. Yeah, he's getting paid using campaign campaign money to pay himself. Yeah, and all the the smaller Republican events take place there too. So it's like, oh, there are no rules about that. No, there's like an, there's not there are no rules. There are rules. They break them, and there's no consequences. Exactly. We're gonna keep talking about this. We're gonna keep we're gonna talk about now about uh, a story from out of CNN about the Afghani pullout and Donald Trump's role he played in it, even though he says it was all Biden and Kamala's fault. So don't go anywhere. Stay close to us. You are listening to Matt and Air on Air on the Civic Media Radio Network. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Matt and Air on Air. My name is Greg Box, sitting in for Jane Matt and Air, who is currently on vacation. She'll be back on Monday. And, oh boy, howdy, you are going to have a lot to talk about when she comes back. But for right now, you got me, Greg Bach. You've got the board lord, Dr. Slide Calby, on the boards right now, running the whole show. And, of course, across from me, you have today's guest co-host. That is Amy Westrup. That's me. That's you. And we were talking about, uh, we were talking about Donald Trump and making a claim that he had every right to... Uh, interfere with the elections. He has every, it's, it's, it's his right to as president, I guess. And if you have comments on it, call, uh, call us at 855-752-4842, 855-75-CIVIC. I did want to pivot a little bit on an interview that I saw on CNN with HR McMaster, who actually served in the Trump white house. And he, now the, the reason why I'm doing this <clears throat> is one of the things that Donald Trump and all of his, cohorts, if you will, want to say is how terrible Afghanistan was, how terrible Joe Biden was at Afghanistan, how Kamala Harris messed up Afghanistan, and how they have no fingerprints on this whatsoever, which is not true. And it, it H.R. McMaster possibly be true. H.R. McMaster went on CNN with Anderson Cooper in an interview and talked to him about this right oh, Calvin's on the phone right now. So we're gonna So basically what happened was is H.R. McMaster went on CNN to kind of like, he didn't throw total shade on Donald Trump. He didn't. Yeah. He, he's, he's a military guy. He's going to, he was talking about, he, he felt that Obama did not do the best job by pulling out of Iraq you know, mm -hmm. and that Joe Biden and Joe Biden did not make the best transition out of Afghanistan, but it's not all one party's fault. And it never is. It's always going to cross over to different administrations, sure. especially when you're talking about 
a war that's lasted 20 years. So, uh, Calvin, if you have that that CNN clip with H.R. McMaster, if you could play that, please. Ooh, that was funky. <laughs> um, but Trump had his hand on, I mean, does Trump bear part of the responsibility for what happened? Oh, yes. I mean, so the, the whole premise of talking to the Taliban before you leave Afghanistan, why the heck were we even doing that? You know, he even, was going to invite them to Camp David. Right. I mean, even the Obama administration, when they made the mistake of pulling all of our troops out of, of Iraq in 2010, which really set conditions for the rise of ISIS and so forth by 2014, the Obama administration didn't negotiate with al-Qaeda in Iraq on the way out. And so if we were going to leave, why not just leave? What happened in these series of negotiations and concessions to the Taliban is we kind of threw the Afghans onto the bus on the way out. And they cut the Afghan government out of those negotiations, right? Absolutely. So that was mistake one. Then forced them to, to release 5,000 of some of the most heinous people on earth. And then began to The Trump to administration withdraw. forced the Afghan government to release 5,000 Taliban. Correct. Fighters. And then also stopped the active targeting of the Taliban, which President Trump, again, to his credit in 2017, had restored because he was convinced, like, how the heck does this make any sense? Mm. To give your enemy a timeline for your withdrawal and then say, now I'm going to negotiate a, a favorable set uh, settlement? I mean... So it raises the question and and that's to, you know i wanted to play that because i just when i hear people talking about afghanistan people like donald trump and and his supporters it's like it was all joe biden's fault no this is this seemed like a cross the board failure or not a failure but like it wasn't handled the best no and i i assume every administration when they come in are like oh this is the mess that that we inherited how yeah. can we adjust it and mm -hmm. he, he didn't do anything to improve it no quite the opposite and he, because he always leads with his ego. Yes. Right. So it's all about him and, and ugh, gross, but <laughs> I, I can't, I, I cannot imagine him at, at the negotiating table. No, he, he probably told somebody go in there, make it happen. And I'll take all the credit. He probably told yeah. Jared too. Jared was fixing everything back in those days. So, no. uh, Jane from Eau Claire, we got Jane on the call uh, on the phones right now. Jane, how are you today? Thanks for calling in. What's going on? I'm doing good. Thanks for taking my call. I just am curious always about, like, if we could figure out what percentage of people voting for Trump have read Brave New World by Aldous Huxley and make them go read it. But he has a great quote that I think we all need to remember right now. And it was something like, it's not exact, but it was something like, the intent of propaganda is to make one group of people forget that another group of people exist. And that's exactly what Donald Trump is. So I just hope that we can like get more people on board with reading um, literature like that so we can like, you know, apply it to modern day life that we're all dealing with. I totally I totally agree with you, Jane. Thank you so much for calling. We appreciate Thanks, you Jane. reaching out and uh, being part of the show today. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing that's bummed me out, disappointed me made me just feel so sad in this whole process is that there are so many people out there who are good people yeah. who buy into this and think that this man cares about them. I believe they're scared and insecure and I can yeah. get in. Yeah. I can yeah. get into the the topic that, Oh, Oh, you think Joe Biden cares about you? I mean, I actually kind of do, but that's because I'm naive and I'm gullible. But like when I see people, when I see people who are just hardworking Americans, it, it's one. Well, they're naive and gullible too. Yes, but <laughs> right? the thing is, is, is I don't know anybody who has a shrine to Kamala Harris or Joe Biden in their home. I know a lot of liberal people. I yeah. know a lot of Democrats. I know leftists, yeah. socialists, all the individuals. Yeah. Not in one of them has flags, cardboard cutouts, shrines, Bibles, shoes, yeah, trading cards. None of them have that. They they like their candidate. They have problems with them, like ever. I mean, we could talk about Barack Obama's not. They so just still have the the old Kennedy picture. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that. The I I bet they do. I mean, there are very a lot of people that do. I have no, and I would have no problem if it was just like we have a we have a picture of Trump. But like, all right, that's a weird flex, but I get it. Like people had pictures of of John F. Kennedy, but these yes. individuals who treat him like a cult, a leader. He is the savior. Oh, yeah. He is the flawed savior sent from above. Yeah. This guy doesn't care about you at all. And maybe that's the appeal. Maybe they're like, yeah, that's yeah. part of the reason why we like him because he doesn't care because we can do what he wants. Freedom, it's America. But 
at the end of the day, he's asking for your vote and you're going to give it to him. And I want to know what is your return on investment? What do you expect to get back from him being in office? Because you won't get lower ta- taxes. That's going to no. go to the rich. I, right. That's going to go to the billionaires. You're not going to get access to power because you are not. You didn't give enough, and you're not in the. You're not impressive enough to him. Yeah. Well, and I don't know where a, a lot of these people are getting their information, but I was out uh, on a lake recently, and uh, there was a, a boat. But it's it's you can't even go on a lake anymore without it being political <laughs> because there were pontoon boats just dipped in Trump flags and, and yeah. everything. And I was like, wow, this is uncomfortable and I'm not on land. Uh, and we were talking to a pontoon boat next to us. We pulled up. Hi, how you doing? Yeah. Whatever. And I was like, uh, didn't comment on the flag. And the guy said, well, are you looking at my flag? And I was like, well, it takes half your boat up. And he said, if Biden gets, this is before Harris, uh, yeah. took over the ticket, uh, if Biden gets elected, they're going to take my boat. I thought, how are they going to take your boat? No. They are not going to take How are they your... going to take your boat? And by the way, how did you even afford the boat? Like, it, like it just, I don't know. None of it makes sense to me. I don't know what filter information goes through. But Amy, you were talking about taking a little traveling. That's what we're going to talk about next. Oh, we're going to talk about t- traveling and how it broadens your mind and how it's actually a good way to get to know people. Let's do it. So if you have travel stories and that's broaden your perspective or opinions, please call in 855-752-4842 or text us with your stories on how traveling has broadened your minds and or opinions. Coming back with Amy, coming back with Cal. My name is Greg. You're listening to Matt and Air on Air. This is the Civic Media Radio Network. Good, good morning. Welcome back to Matt and on Air. My name is Greg Box, sitting in for Jane Matt and Air, who is currently on vacation. But don't fret. Don't worry. Don't stress. Don't fret. She'll be back on Monday. But we today have a wonderful guest co-host with me today. We have Amy Westrup here, good friend of mine, comedian, Hello. teacher, all-around good person. All-around great gal. Part Canadian. It's amazing. Yeah, and then, part, of course. The good part. <laughs> And then, uh, on of course, we have on the boards Doctor Doctor Slide Cal Sweet Calby the board lord uh, and C note C note. There's another one. And then we were we were we were talking about we were talking about Donald Trump, and it gets stressful, I must say. And you were yeah. telling a story just now about being on a boat, but beforehand, <laughs> um, you were talking about doing some traveling. Yeah, and one of the things that. I can't speak for every other host. I can't. I, I mean, I won't even speak for Jane as far as the 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 design of the show. But at least while I'm sitting here in the big chair, I don't want anyone to ever just get all of their information from one place. Whether it's us, whether it's a different news outlet, whether it's a oh yeah, I want people to be informed, to watch opposing viewpoints, to read opposing yeah. books, that kind of thing, and to have civil discourse. To have civil discourse <laughs> to be properly informed on the issues which affect you your children family and friends your country and the world too and one of the things that you were talking about before we got in the air was you were you were in i believe you said you were in canada yeah i just got back from vancouver yes in vancouver for the last four days and you stopped at a gas station (laughs) okay oh no that 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 was a earlier story i I drove back and forth to oregon last summer gotcha and stopped at some many gas stations and just was surprised at the uh, greetings I got at various ones. But I was just in uh, in Vancouver over the weekend, and um, my daughter goes to school up there. And uh, it's a lovely uh, cultural cross-section. Mm-hmm. Uh, just people from all over the world uh, attend the school. And um, she happened to be the only uh, American in her orientation group because she's a transfer student. Mm-hmm. And just the questions that... They asked her, um, or like oh, she said, oh, I'm from the United States. <laughs> Everybody just kind of like broke eye contact. And then uh, they said, what state are you from? And she said, I'm from Wisconsin. And then they asked her a series of questions. One 
the majority of them didn't know where Wisconsin was, which is fine uh, because, you know, I would guess, hazard to guess that a majority of people uh, in the United States couldn't tell you where Saskatoon is. Or where it's straight up, right? It's straight up and to the left, right? Or British Columbia is, yeah. or you know, uh, the Northern Territories, or Nova Scotia, or what what have you, any of the provinces. But what throughout the weekend, these conversations has led me to believe that like w- Americans, and I'm a proud American, can be a bit obtuse in in the thinking that everybody knows everything about America. Mm-hmm. You know, in every state, yeah, and and I mean, people outside of Wisconsin don't know a lot about uh, other states, and and vice versa. So, you know, it, it's just it, I travel a lot, um, and uh, it's just it's really really interesting. Um, and I I will say sometimes when I depending on where I'm traveling, because uh, I'm a dual citizen and I have mm-hmm. two passports. Sometimes I travel on my Canadian passport. Sometimes yeah. I travel on my U.S. passport, and depending on who I'm talking to, it's just the conversations could lead anywhere. Before I was in Vancouver, I was down in Tampa yeah. uh, doing a workshop and completely different vibe when you get down to Florida. And they're like, where are you from? I'm like, Wisconsin. And there are people in Florida that said, well, so where is that? And I was like, where's Wisconsin? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, well, you know where Chicago is? Yeah, kind of. I'm like, well, we're north of Illinois. We're on the Great Lakes, <laughs> south of Ontario, completely Flummoxed. I would not have brought Ontario into the I, but discussion. But I was just trying to give them like a a, a map view, right? Yeah. And they're just like, yeah, never. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. There's like, is that the one shaped like a mitten? I was like, that's Michigan, but that's contentious too. But we're shaped like a mitten. Yeah, whatever. We're not going to, more like a, we're not going to get into that argument. <laughs> we're just not. <laughs> not today. That's I'm, a whole other show. I just, I just feel like we look more like a mitten than Michigan, but that's fine. Well, you are uh, completely wrong. Well, that's fine. Okay, get, off, yeah. get off my show right now. Exactly. <laughs> I'm out. It's a now, change show. But <laughs> but you did talk about going to a, a gas station to me, and I thought that oh. was interesting is that you, you, and you, and you noticed that like there was like really one mode of yeah. information gathering there. Yeah. We, my, my daughter and I drove uh, out to Oregon, and we didn't take any of the major highways. Mm-hmm. We took all the old roads. So it was very, very rural. Yeah. And we were just talking about the fact that like back in the day, even I growing up because I'm fifties, um, you know, you had a couple newspapers and you had, you know, a radio station that you always listened to mm-hmm. and you didn't, and that was it. And then in the, in more rural communities, it was like the newspaper, you go down to the, the post office and you exchange stories and get news that way. Um, but now like, Every place we would stop, there would be a television on or yeah. multiple televisions on with the same with with the same station, and then everyone's on their phones, and it's the connection is interesting. And I'm just wondering, like, where are people getting all their information? Is it valid information? Because I went in and uh, to a gas station, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Hey, how you doing today?" And the guy said, "Ah." These liberals are trying to take away our cars. Pretty soon you're going to only be allowed to ride bikes. And I was like, <laughs> what? I'm like, what do you mean? I was like, well, you can still sell air, I guess, then for the tires. Mm-hmm. And he said, what are you, some gorp sucking liberal tree hugger? Wow. And I was like, wow. <laughs> gorp? I haven't had gorp since about seventh grade. But uh, it, most of the listeners probably won't know what it is. But it's like, what in the heck, man? I'm here to buy gas. Yeah. And, and like, that's your opening line. Like, how are you doing? Well, if it wasn't for these, li- like, like you either. They're trying to get rid of my gas station. It's like, how? I want to be like, have, am I the first person you've spoken to all week? Because you just, it just. <laughs> no, I was like, like the fourth in line. I think I was the only one that asked how he was. Yeah. That was the other thing. <laughs> there was like, no eye contact. Oh, see, that's. It was nothing. All the others in the gas station were like, like as oh. soon as they heard how you're doing, like, oh, you don't ask Tom how God, he's doing. And she's wearing Burke and stuff. Oh, my God, God. Don't ask Tom no, how he's doing. Just do pay it. for your gas and walk <laughs> away. But that sparked a thought in my brain of like, you know, how, and you are a well traveled person. I yeah. have traveled some places. I've gone a lot of states in the United States. I've gone Canada once. I've been overseas to sure. Europe. But I wouldn't consider myself. Well seasoned. traveled, like, yeah. there aren't, there aren't a lot of stamps in my passport, but I know that from talking to friends who have done that, as what well, and you are one of these individuals, mm-hmm. is that is expanded your mind and your understanding of others around you and how the oh. world affects them as well. And we wanted to hear from people about, you know, do you have any stories about traveling overseas or maybe just traveling to another state where you got to encounter individuals not like yourself, 
see a way of life that you had no idea about. And it molded you in how you interact, how you behave, how you speak, what you take in as far as information, what you, you know, if you want to like call us and tell us 855-752-4842, 855-75-CIVIC. You can text us as well. The uh, number is good for texting or calling. You can make a comment on the live stream and we love to hear from you just to let you, just to tell us how traveling has broadened your mind. Uh, Alicia on the live stream says, uh, I say the U.S. has two left mittens. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Yeah. All right. Like two good Ms. Westerners were like, that's fine. But in our heads, we're like, nope. It's got one. It's Michigan's the mitten. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I think Wisconsin looks more like an oven mitt. Well, I guess if you're, 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 you're splitting hairs on what, what kind of mitt we're talking about. No, we said mitten. Yeah. Mitten, like, a, like you wear in the winter. Oven mitt. It's like more bulbous at the top with a small thumb. Not anyway. You can't. Th- okay, never mind. That's okay. So traveling. So I've been everywhere. So uh, like back in 1984, I, I, I've got uh, a really big family. Yeah. And my dad's a professor. And we went to Australia in 1984. My goodness. 11 of us. It was like a U.S. invasion of Australia. And they're like, Yankees, what are you doing here? And uh, to try and take your cars. I took my cars. We danced with wallabies and, and kangaroos and stuff. But back then, like literally, this is before Crocodile Dundee. I mean, this is before people knew where it was on the map. And uh, uh, we just, we went there and it completely, it changed our DNA. Mm-hmm. I mean, one, how, it, old were, how old were you? When I was uh, in seventh grade. So I was 12, uh, yeah, 12 or 13. Yeah. yeah summer of my 13th year. Yeah, because my, uh, yeah, I had just turned 13. Mm-hmm. Um, and we went there and, I mean, talk about a culture shock for, for us and, and them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they had a bunch of, literally, we were called Yankees, like, everywhere we went. It was very interesting. But, um, it, yeah, it, that from the food to just the, the culture, adapting to the accents, uh, you know, how the metric system. <laughs> Like order, I was telling my daughter the other day because we were up in Vancouver. And we went to order some. We went to a deli, and she ordered some ham for her, or like food for her apartment. Yeah, she was like, "I'm going to go to the deli," and she's like, "I asked for a pound of ham, but they're metric." And so she was like, "I didn't know how many grams." So she said something like eight hundred grams. She has like a two months worth of ham. <laughs> And I was like, that's a lot of ham, Kath. And she's like, yeah. It's a <laughs> so at no point, amount. no point that they were like, like we can understand. How they, no, they took full advantage of her, her ignorance of the metric <laughs> system. But, uh, but yeah, then we, we've traveled to Australia a number of times, but then um, at different points in my life, but then uh, we took our kids to India. Yes. On a trip to India. Yeah. And that was extraordinary, extraordinary experience. It, we're still processing it. So. I mean, you, and you, and you said that you got pushback from people. Oh, as far as like taking your children. Yeah. To India. My kid, well, at the time, my daughter, sixth grade and fourth grade. And I had a woman stop me and said, I cannot believe that you would bring your children to a country like that and expose them to, to, to that. That That's so dangerous. And I was like, expose them to what culture? Yeah. Like we have all of our shots, Spices. Like <laughs> sp- beautiful colors. Now I will tell you that we went Mm -hmm. and it was literally an assault on all of your senses. My, to this day, our family talks about it. My children have have said, Oh, we're still processing. it." (laughs) And I mean, you really, it is, I mean, it's, it's like nothing I've ever experienced. And um, yeah. And so it's, it's just, it's something that, I, we are still processing. It's mm-hmm. extreme poverty to extreme wealth within like one block of one another. Yeah. It's just so many people. Um, yeah. But the sights and the sounds and the colors and the fragrances and, and just, um, you know, taking a train across India. I don't. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was really something else. And you had to be very careful. Um, mm-hmm. We did have a guide for some of it. Um, and you're, you're, you're vulnerable and you have to, get over yourself (laughs) and you have to be respectful of the culture that you're traveling in and respectful of the people and what you're learning. Um, and you have to try, (laughs) you have to try 
to, you know, like I've been to France, you have to try to speak French. If you go to Europe, you have to at least learn some phrases, right? Mm -hmm. Be respectful of the culture that you're, that you're in. And as soon as you try, you're just like, cool, thanks for trying. Yeah. Just, you know, and um, interestingly, my, my daughter called me yesterday. She goes to school in Vancouver. She had her uh, introduction, her orientation yesterday. And the person doing orientation did all of her introductions in Japanese. And my daughter said, which was, and she's a linguist, so she kind of yeah. understood some of it. And the professor said, the reason I'm doing that is you have to understand that 33% of this campus doesn't speak English. And so you don't speak Japanese. Imagine. like, you Oh, wow. So it was a, a, a bit of like indoctrinated, like not everybody on this campus is like you. <laughs> yeah. We're all very, very different. And so I'm, I'm letting you know what somebody that is, is a non-English speaker is, is going through right now. I want you to experience it, that moment. So it's pretty powerful. Are you telling me that a school, well, this is not an American school, but a school is teaching children empathy? Yes. Yeah. I, I don't know how I feel about that. I just, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not a fan of that. We're going to keep talking about this though. And, sure. uh, take your calls and look at your text messages. Feel free to give us a call. 855, uh, Seven five two eight four eight four two. I don't know anything wow. right now. I'm very, very, very excited it's to talk more about Trump. Oh uh, yeah, don't go anywhere. We're you're, you're listening to Matt and Air on Air on the Civic Media Radio Network. Good, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Matt and Air on Air. My name is Greg Box, sitting in for Jane Matt and Air, who is on vacation and will be joining us once again on Monday. So we're very excited to have her back. Of course, we have the wonderful Amy Westrup it's as me. our it's you as our guest host for the morning. We also have Cal B on the uh, on the boards. Cal, did you have something by the way you wanted to contribute before? I saw the microphone coming up, and I was sure if you wanted to talk about traveling as a as a as a, a soothing balm. Well, I haven't been lucky enough to do a lot of traveling but i definitely have a list of places i want to go where do you want to go um so number one well i guess we'll do no order because i can't say number one <laughs> uh we'll do three uh i really want to go to japan yeah nice um i really want to go to italy okay and then we'll say this is where there's lots of options it's between great britain and thailand Okay. Wow. I would see. That's the thing is like I, uh, Japan, Italy, and Thailand are on my list. Mm -hmm. I've been to England. It's very, very fun. Um, yeah, those are all great places. Those are all. Maybe Cal, what we need to do is you and I need to have a travel show on Civic Media, where they pay us to go to exotic places all over the world, and ask them. I think where they'll, they think they'll send you to Cudahy. <laughs> I think they'll send you to Wausau. Wasa, Wasa, and then uh, I think you'll end up in Rhinelander. Which, by the way, yeah, I I say kind of jokingly, but there are a lot of people that don't even leave their county. Yeah, and and it's important to travel around the state and travel around the U United States. A lot of people don't do that. I know people that have never been to Illinois. Yeah, so it's like there's a lot of cultural diversity just in our state. Well, and traveling doesn't also mean going out of the country either. Or going, Correct. You know, it, I mean, it is, like like you said, getting out of your house, going to another city, going to another yeah. state. Like, I mean, I live I live 20 minutes from Illinois. Go travel there. I mean, it's. I just yeah. think that getting out of your comfort zone is important. It informs. Well, then what, international travel because it's really uncomfortable these days. Yeah, it's also very, very expensive. Yeah. Uh yeah. Alicia on the live stream says going to Argentina when I was in high school was an awesome experience. I mean, that's 
I think that is, I wish I would have done more traveling in high school and college. Yeah. I didn't start traveling until I was in my twenties and thirties. And so I, I just would love to hear the stories of people who have, you know, especially people who, who, who are raised in a certain type of household. And, and, and I'm, I'm saying that very broadly. Yeah. So like some people, you know, like, you know, raised maybe very religious, they get out, they go to college and they, they yeah, meet the new people. Maybe. They meet people yeah. who aren't like them. I, I was raised in a house that travel was always, always important. My grandparents traveled my, uh, on both sides. Yeah. And, uh, but on my mom's side in particular, they traveled everywhere and we would sit around and my grandmother would just tell us stories about yeah. like, Oh, I went to communist China. I went to, you know, I went to Bali before you could go before it was open and all these great adventures. So it never occurred to me not to travel. Mm -hmm. And, um, it, it's, it's an investment that like my husband and I love to travel, but we decided very early on that that was our investment. Like we're investing in experiences for but, our family, for our kids, for ourselves, because it, you can only become a better person. I think that, and especially for parents who are taking their children to other countries. And start early. Start yeah. when they're little, tiny baby mice, because then they're going to be great travelers for the rest of their lives. Well, they'll also be fearless, too, as far as, like, yeah. the like I think for me, for one, for me personally, it was that my parents didn't go out of the country. They went, there were a couple of places they went. Sure. And I didn't. So for me, it was like, oh, you, I guess you travel when you're older. Whereas yeah, I guess kids I, I can't wish, do that. <laughs> I wish I would have been traveling more as a young kid. We have some text messages. Yeah. We got Liz from Sockville. I've only been to Mexico, Caribbean, a fair amount of the states. My husband and I want went on cruise a few cruises. The workers on the cruises were from all over the Caribbean, and we loved hearing about their home life and families. We stopped in Labadee, Haiti. We met a family on the cruise that took their two kids to the, to a classroom on Labadee to show them what a school is like in Haiti. I mean, that yeah. is that's right. That's giving kids experience too, showing them that the world is different outside of their their little bubble. Their bubble. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then so and then uh, someone listening on WGBW says I spent three weeks down in Mexico in high in, on a high school trip and I've been wanting to go back ever since. Yeah, and, I mean it's I truly believe that that sort of attitude towards getting out and expanding horizons can make you a more well informed person. Well, and we were talking about the, the cost, right? Yeah. There are there are ways to do this affordably too. There are a lot of groups, mm -hmm. uh, charitable groups and organizations that need help. They will help fund those trips. Yeah. Um, you know, you can go on, uh, work trips and, yeah. um, and, and that's a really valuable thing, particularly for kids. My kids were really fortunate. They had some great opportunities in high school. My one daughter went to Cuba. They were the first high school, uh, class to go to Cuba. And then it was, shut down like a month later, but they were there when the stones were performing in Cuba. In Cuba? Yeah. Oh. The same week they were like down the street and they could hear it and see, they were like on the periphery. It was really cool. But, um, and then the Galapagos, but oh. they had some, they had some precarious moments traveling. Uh, one of my daughters was pulled out of the security line for no reason and put in to a small room. Fortunately, she's pretty almost fluent in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So she could communicate with them. But you know, those are things you don't forget. Yeah, and she is a a bold traveler now, but yeah, um, yeah, it it kind of it builds up your wherewithal for sure. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of I like her comment about taking a cruise. I've not been on a cruise, but yeah. it's definitely if you're nervous about traveling internationally, that's a nice entry point mm -hmm. um, where you can visit some some different countries, but then get back to your comfort zone on on the boat. So that's great. I'm glad that people are bringing their kids and exposing them to cultures. It's it's just so invaluable. I think I. Thousand percent agree. Carmela on the text line, listening in WAUK. It's always great to hear from Carmela, great friend. Nice. Uh, thank you guys for talking about your experiences, especially on the political spectrum. I've been getting a lot of rebuttals regarding my support for Harris Walls. Like you, Amy, I get strange things brought up in opposition to my support, like cars or boats or even their schools. I can't wrap my brain around it, and you and usually I don't know how to respond. Which we've talked to you, Carmela, a lot about. We we've made you. Sometimes you can't respond. Sometimes it's I just, just say, go vote. Just go vote. And, I smile and yep. say, go vote. Yep. Uh, we're going to keep talking with Amy. We're going to keep talking with Cal. We're going to keep, keep talking to you, and we're going to take a break. But don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to ask a question. Is J.D. Vance okay? I don't know. And then we're going to uh, another installment, uh, the Wednesday installment of 
let's not do this, or as we also call it, this should not be a thing. We're still deciding on a title. Talking about a very not okay thing happening on Trump rallies. But we just call it you. Exactly. It's exactly what it is. But don't go anywhere. Stay close. Taking a small break. Go get yourself some water. Stay hydrated. You're listening to Matt and Air on Air on the Civic Media Radio Network.